The sound of wailing sirens and revving engines accompanies a high-speed chase on the highway as two robbers wearing clown costumes attempt to cross over to Mexico. One is injured in the backseat, bleeding over a bag full of cash which seems to bother his partner more than anything else. The getaway car swerves off the road, advancing towards the border as the driver speeds along the wall, looking for any opportunity to get to the other side. Mexican Federal Police and the American Border Patrol are hot on their trail as the thieves try to jump over the wall off a ramp. The chase eventually comes to an end when the car crashes and lands on Mexican soil. Officer Vasquez of the Mexican Federal Police and Bill of the American Border Patrol both agree that the criminals will be taken by the Americans. But when Vasquez realizes there is a bag full of cash in the backseat, his eyes light up with dollar signs. He has a dubious arrangement with Bill and uses it as leverage to threaten him into surrendering the criminals. As a result, the American Border Patrol leaves the scene empty-handed, while two mysterious cowboys watch from a safe distance. Vasquez implements his advanced Mexican police techniques on the driver but cannot figure out who he really is. What's your name? Dennis? <coughs> Howard. <coughs> Since the driver doesn't reveal his real name throughout the movie, we'll refer to him as Gringo from now on. Vasquez and his partner Romero take the money and book Gringo, and he cleverly gives them unreadable fingerprints. After he's been processed, they take him to a holding facility, an overcrowded violent cesspool where the criminals are armed and there appear to be no rules. Very soon a couple of inmates gang up on him, trying to take his shoes and beating him senseless. After that, the inmates are welcomed by the warden, who tells them they'll be transferred to the main prison soon called El Pueblito which is Spanish for the small town. Once he steps out, an American consulate official named Jack is waiting for him and inquires about the American prisoner, to which he responds that they'll talk later and sort things out. Even though it's not Gringo's first time in the can, when they later take him to Gen Pop he finds everything confusing. The prison has stores, food carts, tattoo parlors and pretty much anything else you can think of. Men and women can roam around and engage in whatever illegal activities they like. While scanning the prison, he spots the man who attacked him in jail and follows him inside the bathroom. After making sure they're alone, Gringo shoves his legs out of the bathroom and knocks him unconscious. He steals his gun and valuables, hiding the gun in the bathroom stall and leaving with his money and expensive watch. He then returns to the courtyard, where inmates are clustered on the filthy ground and falls asleep. The next day, the inmates are taken to work at the prison's recycling plant, where Gringo is held down by several armed goons as a nurse takes some of his blood for an unknown experiment. Later, he notices a man wearing a bathrobe in a penthouse and two of his men. Here he realizes that they are probably the ones running this place. One thing he understands is that money can buy you some freedom in this small town. For starters, he pays off the guards for a quarter and takes the day off to do what he's really good at. The American glides through the crowd and finds his first project. The money stashed in the drug den. He proceeds to steal a can of cooking oil and uses it to light a food cart on fire, effectively distracting the crowd and leaving the money unsupervised. As everyone rushes to put out the fire, he is able to steal the money and flee. As he watches the cart burn, a 10-year-old child walks up to him and asks for a cigarette. When Gringo refuses, the child reveals that he witnessed him stealing the money and threatens to rat him out if he doesn't play ball. The child lives in prison with his mother and claims to be special. Furthermore, he explains that every person who has enough money can live inside the prison with their family, which means non-inmates are free to go in and out. While they're busy getting acquainted, the child's mother catches him smoking and takes him home furiously. Afterwards, Jack pays Gringo a visit to help him get out of prison. As usual, Gringo gives him a false name and backstory while claiming he didn't do anything wrong. Jack pokes a lot of holes in his story and believes he's a professional criminal, pointing out how he burned off his fingerprint. Given the dishonesty they cannot work together and split up, with Gringo thinking of a way out on his own and Jack promising to find out the truth about him. Following that, Gringo rents a tiny cubicle from Carnal, the prison's real estate agent. Later that night, the prison king throws a luxurious party for special inmates with beautiful party girls accompanying them. Gringo peers through the window and sees the warden among the inmates, but it's the Mexican child's mother who surprises him the most. She seems preoccupied and almost shares a moment with Gringo before walking up to him and punching him square in the jaw, leaving him dumbstruck as she finds her kid and goes home. The next morning, an inmate is shot dead for attempting a prison break in the courtyard, making it clear that escape is not an option. The kid approaches Gringo and they talk about how the kid's mother works for Javi, the prison king. He also informs Gringo that Javi's henchmen are Caracas's brother, and Carnal his cousin. 
It turns out that Javi has a deal with the authorities and gets to leave whenever he wants, but even the prison king must come back to serve his time. When he asks the kid about the word special he mentioned earlier and the blood sample they took from him, the kid comes up empty. Meanwhile, Jack is tracking down Officer Vasquez and his partner to find out more about the case. He finds them floating around a whorehouse among the respectable ladies flashing their newfound wealth and expensive cars, which makes him suspicious. It's visiting day at El Pablito, but things are not quite the same in the other prisons. To give you an idea, couples are renting tents and doing two-person push-ups among the crowds. On the other side of the courtyard, the kid has gotten into a fight with another child as their peers cheer them on. Gringo is watching as Javi and Caracas approach the scene, and Javi orders the latter to have the kids back. As they walk away, Gringo notices the kid pulling a shank from his clothes and following them, seemingly to kill Javi. Gringo talks him out of it, wondering why he would want to kill the man. After an emotional back and forth, the kid reveals that Javi killed his father in order to take his liver. Javi has an extraordinarily rare blood type, so rare that they test all the inmates for compatibility and the kid and his father are the only matches so far. This is why the kid is special. Javi takes care of him so he can use his liver when a new one is needed. The next stop for Jack is the impound yard, where the gringo's getaway car is being held. He finds two cowboys who are the same ones from the beginning of the film, rummaging through the car for their stolen money. At first, they pull a gun on him, but he can persuade them to pay a reasonable price in exchange for knowing where the money is. Gringo and the kid go to a wrestling match hosted by Javi. Gringo takes the latter's cigarette and sends him to get some snacks instead. To his surprise, the kid's mom notices this and finds it appealing. She invites him for a beer, but the prison guard cuts in and tells the gringo he has a visitor. Officers Vasquez and Romero have come to uncover where the money was stolen from and who it belongs to. They got scared when they heard two of the officers from that day had been tortured and killed, figuring it must be about the money. They try to scare him into talking. But Gringo warns them that they are the ones who are in danger and they have to flee immediately. The next day, Gringo devises a plan with the kid to bait Javi's henchmen, which include Carnal and his friend Carlos, whom Gringo robbed earlier in the bathroom. The kid walks past them flashing the stolen watch from earlier. When it catches Carlos's attention, he chases the kid through the alleys and leaves Carnal alone. Gringo takes the opportunity and pickpockets Carnal as he bumps into him. After they regroup and split their earnings, the kid's mother invites Gringo in for the beer. They take turns telling stories of their former lovers. Gringo explains how he lost his wife to his partner Reginald Barnes, and how he testified against Gringo in court and sent him to prison. He goes on to describe a dream he's been having a lot lately, in which two men knock on Reginald's door and kill him. In response, she shares the story of her late husband and child's Bambi blood, a unique one and a half million blood type. The scene comes to an end with Gringo making a promise to look after her child. Meanwhile, Caracas goes to collect the real state's income from Carnal and finds him drugged out of his mind. He tells Caracas someone has stolen the money, but his bad reputation as a junkie exceeds his claims and puts him in a tough spot, either find the money or lose his job. He sets out in a drunken rage in search of the kid with Carlos by his side. Carnal storms into their house and beats him senseless as his mother weeps helplessly. When he can't find his money he decides to rape the woman. Meanwhile, the gringo is relaxing in the courtyard when he notices Carlos asking about him. He realizes everything has gone south and starts sprinting towards the bathrooms where he hid the gun earlier. Gringo fumbles around his hiding spot until he finds the gun and shoots the man dead. Caracas on the other hand, arrives in time and stops Carnal. They fight as the situation gets worse and Carnal manages to overpower him, knocking him to the floor and preparing to execute him. Gringo darts across the prison yard making it quick enough to save Caracas, the kid and his mother. Afterwards, Gringo is taken to a holding cell, Javi storms in, holding a loaded gun between Gringo's eyes. Gringo shows fear for the first time and starts stammering about how he saved Javi and Caracas and the child who was so valuable to them. When Javi realizes the man knows about the liver, he decides to spare him and find out who he really is before killing him. Later, Gringo receives a call from Jack offering to help him find the money before it's too late in exchange for a share of it. Instead, Gringo finds Caracas and tells him how Vasquez and Romero have taken $2 million from him. He dupes Caracas into returning his money and asks for only 10% of it, thinking that having his money in Javi's hands would be better than losing it all. Unfortunately for Caracas, the money's owner Frank Fowler has already gotten a hold of the corrupt cops thanks to Jack. The officers are being held hostage by the two cowboys from earlier. Frank claims there were $4 million, 
while his men only found 1.7 million and a couple of cars outside. They cut off three of Vasquez Toza's payback, even though he swears this was all they found. The moment they are about to kill Vasquez, Javi's men show up just in time, killing everyone and taking the money. On the other hand, Jack pays off the prison guards on Frank's behalf so they cover his men when they try to kill Gringo. Three cowboys ambush Gringo, the kid and his mother in the prison yard. Bullets fly left and right as innocent bystanders lose their lives. Gringo activates the max pain mode and starts fighting back, eliminating two of the men and the guard overhead. The last cowboy throws a grenade at him, but he throws it back at him in midair and blows him to pieces. They miraculously survive the bloodbath that many others didn't, only to face Caracas' question, who the hell is Gringo? After killing the corrupt prison guards, Javi threatens to kill Gringo if he doesn't spill the beans. This time Gringo introduces himself as Reginald Barnes. Since they both know that Frank won't be giving up on his money, Gringo offers to go and kill him in exchange for his freedom, asking for a vehicle, a gun and some cash for the mission. Javi would much rather send a worthless Gringo to his death than one of his men, so he agrees, warning him to stay away from the child and his mother. Javi issues a driver's license for Gringo and also orders two hitmen to kill him after dealing with Frank. Soon afterward, the warden informs Javi that the government intends to close the prison as a result of the earlier shooting. He takes a moment to consult Caracas, considering he has been getting weak recently and will surely need a liver transplant soon. He decides to go through with the surgery before it's too late. Gringo passes border patrol thanks to the fake ID and finds himself a cheap secretary. I'm not sure how to say this without sounding like a joke. He calls Warren Kaufman and pretends to be Clint Eastwood in order to set up a meeting with him. Afterwards, he tails Javi's hitman and stuffs a cheeseburger in the muffler of their car. When they pull over to check it out, he executes them quickly with a single shot to the head. Meanwhile at the prison, the kid's mother watches dreadfully as Javi's doctor comes to pay him a visit, indicating that the transplantation is imminent. She dashes over to her friend's house, hides the kid in a wall hole and tells him to stay there until everything blows over. Soon after, Javi's men come and take her to a dark holding cell and tie her up. They torture her incessantly in an attempt to break her spirit. As she barely holds on to her consciousness, she notices her child has come to save her. He stands a few feet away from Javi, holding a sharp shank in his hand and repeatedly stabs himself in the liver in the hopes of saving his mother. To save his liver, they rush him to the nurse's room. After his condition becomes stable, they decide to perform the surgery later that night. At the same time, Gringo can be seen working on his plan. He calls Frank's representative, impersonating Warren Kaufman, and asks if he can do business with Frank. After a bit of consideration, the representative decides it's worth a meeting to collaborate with such a successful entrepreneur, and he agrees to meet him the following morning at Kaufman's office. Later, he persuades Frank to let Kaufman in on his drug business. The next morning, Gringo arrives at the meeting carrying a mysterious umbrella, introducing himself as Reginald Barnes and posing as Clint Eastwood's assistant. After informing the secretary that Mr. Eastwood and two associates are on their way, he knocks out Mr. Kaufman and locks him in the bathroom. Once Frank and his representative show up, the secretary confuses them with the associates and lets them in. Gringo then distracts them with a painting on the wall before tossing two grenades right under their feet and sealing their fate. He makes his escape as sprinklers make him use his umbrella and Kaufman's secretary finds him alive. Before returning for the money, Gringo needs to tie up one last loose end with Jack. He finds him drunk and having a wild time with strippers. Gringo ties him to a chair and begins the interrogation. It doesn't take much to get him talking. He quickly reveals that Javi's going to have his surgery and that the prison will be shut down that night, meaning he will never see his money again if he doesn't shake a leg. After finding out where his crashed car is, he grabs the latter's gun and badge and rushes out of the room. Back at El Pablito, over 200 soldiers and special ops forces have gathered to disband the prison in a flurry of armed vehicles preparing to invade. Riots erupt as the soldiers swarm inside. Javi's going through with the surgery as Caracas and his men guard the operating room. Gringo enters using Jack's badge and tries to find his way to Javi. It won't be easy considering the fights breaking out in every corner of the prison. When he notices the cash bags in one of the buildings, he is faced with one of the hardest decisions of his life. Take the money and run? or stay and save the kid. After a bit of thought, he chooses the second option and hurries to the operating room. Caracas tries to stop him, but Gringo manages to get inside as they are about to remove the kid's liver. He threatens to kill Javi unless Caracas brings the mother. Caracas returns with her at gunpoint. Here one of the nurses pulls a gun on Gringo, lowering Caracas' guard just enough for Gringo to kill him. They rush the kid into an ambulance, 
but not before Gringo gets his cash bags. They escape in the ambulance disguised as medics, leaving Javi to die. Gringo gets the other $2 million that he has hidden in his car at the impound lot. In the aftermath, Gringo, the kid and his mother escape to a beautiful beach where they live a carefree lifestyle. On the other hand, Kaufman eventually tracks down the real Reginald Barnes and takes him out, fulfilling Gringo's dream and solidifying his paradise. And that's a wrap for today's video, stay awesome until next time.